of the um, reduction cut process. So I'm gonna take you guys through the um, second color printing of this process and then I'll post the video as well. So um, I've done the carving for my second block and um, I used the carving tools, I used numbers, uh, number two, they're engraved on the bottom. This might not show up on the camera too well. It's hard to see, but on the, on the, the bottom side of the cutting tool, you'll see an engraved number. So I used the number two, and I used the number five. The la this is the largest one. So, um, so again, hard, maybe hard to see on the camera. Five is like a wide gouge, like a U-shaped gouge. For, for clearing out large areas. Two is um, kind of a... Uh, standard? Some, yeah, like a standard V gouge, kind of a mid-size cut. Um, and then I didn't use the number one, but the number one is going to be the smallest one. So this is a really, really small V gouge for very, very tiny detail. So I ended up not using this one, um, but I, I might go back and use it maybe in the third layer when I do uh, some more details. So... Um, all right, so this is my, these are my prints. I've got three, three first layers, and I'm going to put the second layer on these three prints. And so I'm going to go uh, kind of to a darker green this time, print a darker green for some of the hill shadows and stuff like that. Um, so I'm going to mix my green on this, um, it's called a bench hook, so this metal tray, this metal bench hook, which... The ben bench hook because it kind of hooks on the end of the table there, and then I'm going to make a darker green using the palette knife and some blue and some yellow. And I'm going for kind of an earthy green, so I used the um, the more sort of earthy yellow for this, uh, and I and I used the the straight blue, not the turquoise blue. Might be just off camera, maybe on the co very corner of the screen. All right, so, and, you know, spend some time color mixing to get the shade you want. Don't rush the color mixing. Okay, so that's, that's the color I've got. So it's a little bit, it's definitely darker than my first color. And I think it'll work for a shadow tone. So I'm going to push all the extra paint off to the side and just have this green on the, on the bench hook. So there's my, there's my color. There. And then I'm going to use the roller. Okay, it's the roller or the brayer, same thing, to roll out the ink. And let me get this, I need to get this on camera so you can see. So, do. so you don't want, that's too much ink for one print. I mixed in, up enough ink for more than one print. I don't want all that ink. I want just enough for one print. So I'm not going to roll the roller in the middle of the pile. Otherwise, I'm going to get too much, I'm going to get too much ink. All right, you can go in, you can roll in both directions, but you don't want to be rolling the roller through all the ink that you that you made for your three prints, right? You want to have enough ink left over for the other prints, and you also need to control the amount of ink on the roller. You can hear that kind of sticky sound. That's the that's the signal that you have the right amount of ink. If you don't hear that noise, you may have too much or too little. If you have too much ink, you'll see like big streaks, and if you have too much, too little ink, not enough ink, it's just going to be kind of flat and not make any texture when you roll the roller of the ink. So make sure you have the right amount of ink, kind of get that sound, and then you get uh, these little peaks, like you'll see little like white caps almost in the in the ink when you roll it, and so that's how you know you have enough ink. And then you want to evenly distribute that amount of ink onto the block. Whole thing. 
All right, and that's pretty much what my second layer is going to look like. I'm going to do a test print anyway, though. So before I do my, my, um, my addition, my real print, the, the, the three color um, copies, I'm just going to do, just using some scrap um, printer paper, I'm just going to do a quick test print, see if I like the way it looks. And if I don't, then what I would do is wash the block off carve away a little bit more and revise the carving until I'm happy. I'm just using a spoon. Last time I used a metal spoon. This time I'm using a plastic spoon. Either one's fine. Right, so there's my print. So I can see that it's pretty good. I'm happy with the carving and the way the marks look, but I did get, you can see like right here, you can see there's a little like, there's a little like piece of um, rubber with like a halo effect around it. So, and same with right there. So it's like a little pebble that gets caught and that happens all the time, especially with your first print. Um, you'll get some stray material from after the carving process. And you can actually, I don't know if you can see it on the block, but there's actually like ink left on the block with a little shiny area of ink where the little piece of material stuck on there. And then because that little piece of material is higher than the surface of the block, it's surrounded by wet ink that didn't print. And that's why it looks like a little halo spot on the uh, print itself. So you, that's another good reason to print on some scrap paper when you start so that you can work out any of those little printing annoyances. All right, so move this off to the side. Okay. And then I'm going to do this for real. I'm going to give it a try. Oh, check the roller too. Sometimes, sometimes little pieces of rubber will stick to the roller too. The ink is pretty sticky. The ink is almost like glue. Yeah, it's very much like a glue. It's like a really, really thick, tacky ink. So um, I mean, it looks like paint, but it's it's actually different than paint. You'll find that it stays wetter longer than acrylic paint does, and it's much thicker and stickier because with printmaking ink, you don't really want to have like a flow or you don't want like a like a liquidness to it because then it's not going to stay right where you roll it so you have to have so the ink is a little bit different so i guess it's called ink in order to uh make sure that we don't get confused ink in quotation marks yeah ink in quotation marks exactly karen okay looks like paint but is not called paint all right, so roll up my second color. And then I'm gonna use my registration guide, so make sure you make this registration guide before anything else, before your first, this is in the, it's in the, the video where I printed the first layer. You have to make this registration guide and you need to use it the whole way through because if you lose it or throw it away and make a new one, it might not be exactly the same as it was the first time. And I made the registration guide out of a heavyweight paper that won't curl too badly. And I tape it down to the table when I, when I work so that it doesn't slide around. So I'm going to line up the block in the little spot where the block goes. And then I'm going to take one of the prints and I'm going to try to line it up as best I can. Um, ugh, the paper does curl a bit. It's the only problem with this paper. And I pressed it flat, but still it curled a bit. So... Um, and again, that has to do with the, the, the heaviness of the paper, or rather the lack of heaviness of the paper. But if you press it flat after, you, after they're dry, typically you, get, you can get it flat enough that you can, you can work with it. Line it up on its spot. Sorry, I'll get out of the way of the camera in a second. Line it up. Okay, use the marks that you made. There's four registration marks 
on the registration guide, one in each corner, use those marks. Okay, smooth it once with your hand so that, that that sticky ink will stay in place and then use the spoon and burnish the back. And if it helps to kind of hold down the print with your other hand so that it doesn't wiggle while you do this, you can do that. You can And then before you pull it, check the corner, pull back the corner, and check to see what your coverage is like. All right, make sure you have good ink coverage. And if you don't, you can put it back down and with your finger or, or with the spoon, go over any spots that you're worried about. You can check all four corners. You've got to peel it back and look. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Oops. Yeah. Hardest part for me, actually picking up paper. Okay, there we go. All right, so there's my, there's my second color. Thanks. All right, so not too bad. I did misalign the print. I can see right here, this bottom corner the green, the dark green is lower than the light green I can see it up here too. Okay, so that's what happens if you're slightly off with your, with your registration um, when you go to do the second and third colors is you might miss on the corners a little bit and the image might be a little bit off. And you know, for this image, it's a landscape. It's not that big a deal because the parts still fit together, but if you have a lot of precise details um, and you're counting on something to line up, then this can be um, a part that you really want to pay attention to. 